Am I good? There you go. There okay, we go. Now. Let me turn you down just a little bit. Talk for me again. Hello, hello. I think that's a good volume right there. I think you're also uh, at do, a good volume. Do, do you but prefer yeah. Anthony or uh, a Blame Truth? Man, call me whatever. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Let's do names. I'm going to call you <laughs> I will call you. I've been calling you Hutch for 15, 16 years now, so I'm going to stick to that. I would prefer for this stream you call me Hercutio. Okay. Well, that's very progressive of you. But do it's, that. I'm going through a phase. I'm just not, I don't like Hutch anymore. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. We got to rebrand. You, get, you did get the glasses, so... You got a new yeah, look going on. Yeah, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. And then we start like a right wing arc. And maybe mm. you can, maybe you have like connections there. And um, you can help me like get in with sort of like the anti SJW <laughs> stuff on Twitter. Do you want, or on, 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 on YouTube. Do you want the number to my uh, Southern family? Because I mean, <laughs> I can, I can totally hook you up there. Uh, a lot no, of... I think that's, I think that's weird. I don't want to talk to your family. So no problem. Uh, so okay, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to make this political, but. There is okay, a really yeah. there is a really weird thing. Um, a lot of my family in the South, actually, like you'd expect them to be just pure right wing, you know, but yeah. they some of them actually voted Bernie uh, in the in the primaries. I think it was and then voted Trump after, which I thought was yeah. very interesting. So, uh, yeah, there was like there was a they both kind of represent the. So, so first of all, there's no overlap whatsoever <laughs> in terms of policy in terms of like their goals yeah but there was an overlap in terms of sort of like anti-establishmentism mm -hmm. if you want to call it that and so i think i think for a lot of people they wanted an outsider to come in and kind of like smash everything down yeah and so even even though there was no there was like no daylight between the two of those politicians in terms of like what they were going for there were just some people that liked the idea of disruption yeah but Anyways, yeah, this is not a politics stream. Uh, you and I have had mm. some disagreements over the years, but but I don't remember the last time we've actually had a conversation. Oh Jesus! So, I, I think it was on I think it was on Black Ops Two on PC. It's uh, been like ten ten years. It yeah, was with it was with it was a Sandy X Cal. It's not it's something ten. It's been like it's about four or five because it was it was Sandy X Cal uh, Batoni. Because that's how I met him, and we're pretty good friends now. Uh, oh. I think it was like four or five years ago because it was like Black Ops 2. It was just us playing old COD. Uh, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 2, something like that on PC. Um, just, I think... I, it, I oh, know. that would have been like three or four years ago. Yeah, then, maybe. It, it, it wasn't yeah. that long ago. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't that long ago. First and foremost, I would like to apologize for calling you the R word because <laughs> that was maybe a little too far. Uh, I don't want to... I, I don't even want to say the word because I don't know the rules on YouTube or Twitch as far as, you know. That that word uh, probably shouldn't use that. So apolog I apologize there. Uh, okay, I appreciate that, okay, uh, sir. You do. I so lost a lot of sleep. <laughs> well, you I kept me up at night. You do something. Okay, so I don't know why it's just you. Um, I can get on the internet, and I mean, you've been doing this as long as I have. You learn to kind of take things on the chin, and nothing. You know, you've seen it all at this point. But there's something about like. I don't know what it is. It's something when, when somebody has a Call of Duty opinion specifically that is really, uh, I guess, against the grain, we'll say. You know, yeah. it's it's almost infuriating and it's silly because it's a video game, right? But in in a lot of ways, like I, I still do take it seriously. I'm I'm I mean, we're both in our 30s. You know, we're getting up there. It's something I do I, I do still take kind of seriously because it's like kind of like my job still. You know, it's like kind of like your job too. So it's just something that can get you heated. Yeah. So, uh, and I do play a bit of a character on YouTube, but I don't want to hide behind that. You know, I don't want to use that as an excuse if I've been like, if I've taken something too far. You know what I mean? So, okay. yeah. Uh, but that's, that's really about it. But no, like, okay. you, you lead the way here. Um, well, I mean, like, I, see, I just can't help it sometimes. Like, I, I think I do it too much. So I will concede that like mm. I just like poking the bear too much when it comes to popular <laughs> ideas about the state of Call of Duty. Yeah. Ideas that I think are not accurate. Mm -hmm. And so I just I can't fucking help myself but antagonize because <clears throat> there just seems to be there are a lot of people and I'm saying it's a lot. There are a lot of people who spend a lot of time on YouTube in the comment section and on Twitter, and they have these like really strong opinions about 
the game and they assume that everybody else has those opinions. They assume that like the average Call of Duty player shares their opinions. Mm -hmm. So like skill-based matchmaking, I think is like the best example of this, but there's like 10,000 examples that you can go with. Right. And um, like, what, 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 are, what are some things that I've said that you think that I'm just dead wrong? There was one instance where, and I can't remember, it's the reason uh, I said what I said on, on PKA the first time. There was something you had, there was something you said, I can't even remember what it was, but it was like you were trolling. Like, it, it seemed like you were trolling. You know what I mean? Like, it was like one of those opinions where it was something about skill-based matchmaking, I, I think. But um, it was basically just, you sounded like an Activision, like, PR guy or something. Like, it, it didn't sound genuine, almost, <laughs> in a way. Well, the, the opinion that I have about skill-based matchmaking is not limited to Call of Duty, because Call of Duty is not the only community that, or online community, or has a mm -hmm. vocal online community that complains about it. Apex has an online community that complains about it. Destiny does. Fortnite does. You, it, there's a... It's it's not it's not me shilling for Activision. I genuinely believe that skill based matchmaking exists for a good reason, okay. and that it's good for video games. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm like I'm not I'm not trolling. I'm I firmly believe that. Count, counterpoint here. So uh, I don't know how Apex or a lot of these other games do their system. The, my main issue with Call of Duty system, and I've said this a lot in my videos, and if you haven't watched them, it's cool. But, like, I've said this a lot. I don't mind. I, I like competition. I don't mind facing good competition. But, like, give me something for it. Uh, I think it was a couple years ago. I tried to... Uh, I, I dabbled in the pro scene in Hearthstone. I'm not going to say I was a pro player by any means. But I dabbled in it. I think you played a little bit of it, too. Um, I wasn't I, very good. But... Yeah, I, I ended up taking... I, I got pretty... Are you, well, hold on, hold on. Are you I, playing I, um, Marvel Snap, by the way? No, no, dude. You should I, play. I I've given up. Uh, I, they released Hearthstone Classic. What was it like two years ago? Hearthstone Classic, the original. Uh -huh. You know, like it was just the base set. And I played it again, and I got High Legend. And then I said, okay, I'm done. Like <laughs> I'm I'm done. I'm never playing it again. And you, I haven't you, touched so the you card. Never, game you since. never got into like Magic Arena or um. Uh... No, no. I got into I got into Pokemon TCG a little bit, but um. A lot of the card games, man, it's, it's, I have an addictive personality and I'm yeah. also quite competitive. So you mix those two things in, like, it's basically the, the, the dopamine from opening packs, you know what I mean? <laughs> the dopamine yeah. to competing. Uh, Snap it's, is a lot of fun. Just so you know, I will, a lot of, and it's I will not look into pay it. to win. It is not pay to okay. win. Okay. Okay. Like, definitely yeah. not pay to win. All right. Like so anyways, that. um, yeah. we were, we were, you were talking about, um, the way matchmaking. that call the, 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 you're saying you want something so you want like a rank or something like that yeah, not just a rank i i want uh okay so let, let's take for example let's go back to hearthstone actually because that that's a good that's a good segue uh it's not the same game obviously but the way hearthstone does their competitive mode and their casual mode is genius when you play casual which you can play casual in that game there's like a very light um skill matching system from what i it's how it used to be at least it, it may have changed very light. Yeah, yeah. When you play casual, there would be like very, you know, it was like old school Call of Duty. Like it's very oh, yeah, light. Yeah. yeah, light skill based matchmaking. Uh, so you could practice out with a stupid deck, you know, before you go into rank and like tank your rank, whatever. And then you go into ranked and you would play people of your skill level and um, you would rank up. And like the more you would rank up, obviously you get a rank, of course, but the more you'd win, the more in game gold you get. Then at the end of the month, at the end of the season, whatever it was, you would get more rewards based on how well you did. Card packs, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. My my issue with Call of Duty is it's this system that's in play. It's it's not talked, it's like a secret, but everybody knows it. it, it people can exploit it. It's very easy to exploit. You don't get anything for it. It kind of makes ranked mode obsolete. There's no, like, it, it just seems mm. shoehorned in there. Again, there's no point to it. Like, you know what I mean? That, that's the main you understand, issue. But you understand why it exists. I mean, there is a point. Like, I you think have to understand. I think that it, why it exists, right? I understand, but I think that it primarily exists for financial purposes, which, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not for the good of the game necessarily, though, because no, it's no, not no, implemented but the, well. But the, but the reason why it's a financial boon to the company is because it 
it makes more players than not happier. They're going to stay on longer if they're not getting their chip pushed in. And this is the thing that kind of confuses me. Like, are all these anti-skill-based matchmaking, like, rabidly, like, anti-COD people that still buy COD every year, which I think is kind of funny, but are they are they all socialists? Like, are you guys are capitalists, right? You believe in a free market economy? You think that, like, you think that companies should pursue profits, I assume, right? Like, you are not a socialist, I would assume, right? Uh, I'd rather not get into it, but... Uh, an anarchist or what? It, I, <laughs> you are not, don't fucking lie to you. You are not a socialist. Don't don't jerk me around. Um, I mean, I voted for Bernie, so uh, <laughs> whatever. Okay, All whatever right. that okay. means. Okay. Um, All right. but no, uh, it, it's it's I I just think it's badly implemented. I I I truly don't think I think a lot of people say that it's done for player retention or whatever but it's not it's it's done to get you to spend money and it's done to increase play time not yeah. necessarily retention and i understand that but you know what else would increase all that organically just make a good game just make a good game that's finished that people are I would happy argue with. that I would, I would argue that the reason why these games sell so well year after year and even though vanguard sales were a little disappointing compared to like previous CODs, it was still the number one selling game of 2022. I was surprised, and actually, yeah, I, when you showed me that. I was surprised. I, I thought it was Elden Ring. Be, I thought it was Elden Ring. surprised. Call of Duty is one of the most persistently successful IPs in video game history. And there comes a point where you have to at least concede that you as like a hardcore player may not be having as much fun with the game as you did before, but clearly there are people that are having fun playing this game. And I think you have some some ideas of like because you, you mm. tweeted me today. You're like, well, if they can only keep like seventy percent of their players, then they <laughs> yeah. would be sitting pretty. They are sitting pretty, my friend. They just oh no, I'm, record Q4 profits. I'm sure they and, uh, no, they make money hand over fist. But see, here's here's my here's my point to all this. Is the point to every video at at the end of the day that I make is that uh, if you it, it makes them good salesmen, they're not making a good game. And I mm -hmm. think that a lot of my audience, like if I tried to make the videos I make now, back when Call of Duty was releasing bangers, like what we, we went from Black Ops 1 to, like my favorite three year stretch in Call of Duty history is Black Ops 1 into Modern Warfare 3 into Black Ops 2. Those were the three games in particular, like back to back to back, just bangers. You know, like I loved all three of them. And, um, there is a, a segment, I guess, of just... If, if I tried to do that back then, nobody would have bought it. Like, when I made my commentaries back then, it was pretty much positive. I complained about Ghost a little bit in Black Ops 1, and then guess what? They fixed it. They fixed it in Black Ops 2. You know, you had to be moving. It's amazing. They fixed it in Black Ops 1 as well. I thought, didn't they change no. the way that Ghost worked in Black Ops 1? No, they nerfed the FAMAS, but no, they didn't change Ghost. But even okay. in that game, it wasn't that bad because you had to give up Flag Jacket. You know, I mean, I'm going back to 2010 metas here, but yeah, uh, you, you you know, there was a Black Ops 1 was still fine. It was playable. It was a little slow because of Ghost the way it was, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like people were up in arms and leaving in droves. That was a really, really successful call of duty in not only like player retention but uh sales i think that was one of the biggest selling call of duties for a long time uh black ops one was and i'm not yeah, one of those this, people this... i'm not one of those people no, go ahead, go ahead. yeah sorry uh i'm not one of those people that's like ah call of duty was way better back in the day like i thought call of duty legitimately peaked sort of in the middle not necessarily uh, the older we get the better it is and I still enjoyed uh, Black Ops 3 a lot. I, I loved Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 might have, and this might ruffle some feathers, but Black Ops 3 might have, from sheer gameplay alone, like how the game was, it might have the best gameplay. It was awesome. Whole. Yeah, no, I it was great. It was great. People didn't yeah. like the loot boxes, and understandable, understandable. But uh, I, could look, I can look past a lot of flaws in games if they're just fun and, and, and like, enjoyable. And uh, I've been playing Skyrim, you know, for the 11th year in a row recently on PC, modding it out. The game's so glitchy and so buggy, but like, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, I can look past a lot of the glitches and bugs. Uh, I can look past the loot boxes in Black Ops 3. I enjoyed Black Ops 4, even. Like, I'm, I'm crazy for saying that. I defended that game 
as soon as it came out and people don't realize like if i like something i'm gonna defend it if i don't like it i'm gonna shit on it you know it doesn't really I mean, matter where all, it came this, out this is all fine because you're talking about yeah. your subjective experience with the game yes my my issue is when people act like their subjective experience with the game is what everybody else thinks and i think that happens on cod twitter and cod reddit and cod youtube all the time everyone is convinced that the that the, the you know everybody else who plays the game you're it's all just one big community and you all agree on the thing mm -hmm. and i'm saying the market determines whether or not a game is you know quote unquote good or bad and i would not sit here and tell you like i think this game is objectively good like i'm having fun with modern warfare 2 but i acknowledge that some people are not having a good time with it right. i didn't really love vanguard but some people got their start playing that game and they had like a, a, a huge amount of fondness for that game the, the the why is it so hard for people to say i don't like the direction of where the game is going but clearly the game is still extremely successful and there are millions of people still enjoying this game you talk about player retention on steam but that is like you have to acknowledge that's not representative there's no way that the the player retention level on steam is representative of what you would find on playstation on battlenet and on mm -hmm. xbox I, lo I looked right before this talk mm -hmm. and the number one most played game on playstation and xbox right now is still modern warfare 2 Probably that's going to be Hogwarts Legacy for like a couple weeks or whatever. Oh, and then I would imagine it would probably go back to Modern Warfare Two. I saw it like, was uh, I saw it was Modern I, I saw it was number two actually. Somebody said it was number two on console today. Uh, I, I was it number up, one was Fortnite. Was I Fortnite? looked up the number. I looked up. Uh, it's a site called News Zoo. I think uh, it's hard to get like firm numbers. Yeah, that's but, the main issue too. Is like I, I would hey if you show me the hard numbers, you know, like if you show me the hard numbers on every platform and call of duty's just killing it for player retention i would concede uh you were asking me like would you admit uh if you were wrong you know if you if something came out to prove you wrong and i'm like yeah every single time i i, I was wrong about battlefield 2042 i thought it was their year because the competition was vanguard you know <laughs> like they had the ball they dropped it it was a disappointment it was a bigger disappointment than vanguard which is saying something probably because it was hyped up way more than vanguard but uh no i i will I, i'm wrong a lot but i'm also right i also told people hey vanguard's gonna be garbage guys like I, I i saw a lot of leaked gameplay of it like way before it came out uh it looked terrible and i'm thinking they're just using like a really bad destructibility gimmick and sledgehammer is known for kind of the redheaded stepchild of the cod dev team i'm like this game's not gonna be it and i told people that the game comes out you know, it launches, I play it, it's terrible. And I say, hey, don't buy this game, it's bad, I told you. And then, you know, there's of course the people defending it, and then as the months pass, people gradually hate it more and more. It get, the game gets worse and worse. I'm not sure how long you played Vanguard, but, oh Couple man. Weeks. Couple, Couple weeks. Couple weeks, yeah. <laughs> you got out. Well, I mean, you... like, I just, I, like, I'm at a point where I just thought BRs were more interesting. Like, I'm kind of getting back into mp stuff because i, mm -hmm. I want to grind out this ranked playlist yeah but like like going back to that ranked play, playlist thing mm. do you think that maybe one of the reasons why they don't give us like special emblems and why they you know like they, they stalled on like the barracks for so long and you don't have like a public rank is because they're they're they don't want like average casual players to look at their rank and then feel like shit like to me yes. it's obvious that they do they make a lot of decisions when it comes to their game based on their intention to like really heavily cater to casual players. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people on the, the, the COD Twitter people are just really can, they like haven't accepted that this is a really casual game and it's always going to be a casual game. And why would they switch that up? But at like, that point, wait, wait, at that point, if it's a casual game, why the strict skill-based matchmaking? I, I get it's to make a profit and to quote unquote protect people, but but you know how easy it is to bypass it, right? Like it's it's incredibly yeah, easy. How many people? How many people are actually doing that? Like, <laughs> You'd what, be give, surprised. Uh, you, give me a give me a ballpark. How, what percentage of of uh, the player base do you think are actually taking the time to? And and the, and my understanding is that deranking in this game 
doesn't really help long term because it it's like a real time skill based match. It's not a D rank it, though. It's uh, it, it, I'll tell you how I do it. I'll tell you how I do it, and I'm, I'm you telling do the thing where you, you do the thing where you get like on an alt account on a PS4 and then join out that and let it. Yeah. How many people are actually doing that? that we're talking less than like. We're talking about a fraction of a percent. Oh, that are well, first that. of all, I want to say that it, even if you do that, the game still sucks because it, either way, like whether you're facing clones of yourself or whether you're facing really not good players, the issue is that it feels very, very scripted. It doesn't feel like you're playing the game. Like once you know it's there, like you can't not, it's a double negative, but you can't not see it in a way, you know, like you can't not feel it. It's 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 not a good it's not a good thing and and what bothers you know, you, me, asked, you, you you asked why skill based matchmaking ex exists in a game that's catered to casuals yes skill based skills based skill based matchmaking exists to cater to casuals but why have a ranked that's mode that's why it exists why have a ranked mode and a hidden ranked mode it's the same because, thing because of, because the vast majority of players are not going to play the ranked mode for Call of Duty I'm gonna I'm gonna guess maybe <laughs> five to ten ten percent of the players are yeah. gonna play ranked yeah if well, that. So again, the vast majority of people who play, they're just going to hop in like TDM or Dom or whatever. Yeah, they're not yeah. going to try to chase some rank. And I don't blame like that. Like, I don't really care about not having a rank. Like, it just doesn't matter. I don't care. I d like, I play before the gameplay. I play for the competitive element of it. So like me personally, I don't give a fuck that they don't give me a rank. I mean, I, I understand like if people want that, I'm not going to be like, well, why do you want that? That's stupid. Like, it's fine that you want that, but. At what point do people start to make the effort to like understand why these decisions are made? It's so obvious why they make these decisions, and that is to please the most amount of people possible. And so a lot of people just can't wrap their head I around the fact that like don't the think, vast majority of mm, players benefit from skill-based matchmaking. I they don't do. think I don't think it's for the benefit of the player base. I think it's for the benefit of the dollar and the shareholders. I have. I don't the, think it has the, anything the to do. The dollar. The benefit of the dollar comes from the benefit to the players. The reason why it benefits them financially is because more players are staying on longer. There, but are they though? Because you're okay. You touted uh, absolutely yes. Whoa, 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 you you touted you touted Activision's metrics for monthly active users. Those metrics are a bit flawed. If I get on once in a month to check out a new patch and play two matches of TDM, and then I'm like, yeah, this sucks, and I get off, that doesn't look good. A monthly active user isn't like somebody that plays all month. Now, no, no, no. if we go I'm back to... Pointing, I'm not pointing to that and saying, like, this is evidence that skill-based matchmaking helps their play over time. You don't even need to look at Call of Duty. Like, are you aware that the Fall Guys devs in their Discord posted a straight-up, mm -hmm. like, it was, like, the first time that I've ever seen a company be that transparent about it. Mm -hmm. But the Fall Guys, de Fall Guys introduced uh, skill-based matchmaking, like, I don't know, six months after the game's launch or whatever. Okay. It pissed a lot of people off. People right. were complaining about it. It was the normal fucking stupid debates on Twitter. Right. And then the devs went in their Discord, and they straight-up said, look... We understand that a lot of you got like veterans of the game are upset with this change and you don't like it. But here's what we saw when we didn't have any skill based matchmaking. What we saw is that new players would come in, get stomped for two to three games and then uninstall the game, not just close the game, but uninstall the game. <laughs> and that as soon as they introduce and it's the same reason why Fortnite added skill based matchmaking. It's the same reason why Destiny is starting to like incrementally add it or like tweak it i don't know mm -hmm. i feel like destiny team is getting a little weird with it what's the but difference here between all of these games and call of duty though and you you said the word earlier it's transparency why is it still hit like why are they still not addressing it you know what I mean? like there's no transparency with it it feels disingenuous in a way you know what, what i mean do you, like, do you want that do you want them to give you like the exact formula that they use or like, i would like you, them to explain how it works why if i am better than the average bear my connection suffers which i think that's just taboo i think that's taboo i mean for the casual player who's you know packing a bowl and eating a bag of doritos it probably doesn't matter whether they're good or not if they're you know they don't care about their ping but it's just i mean this is like online uh, you know uh gameplay 101 don't you never hurt the player's connection you should never you sacrifice a, do you live in a more remote area or do you live in kind of like near a major metropolitan area i live about an hour out from uh, charlotte north carolina and i have fiber internet right but it's your yeah. ping is going to be based on like where the server is yes where the server where the, it's dedicated i think it's a combination of, it's like a hybrid i think but fiber, they right? will or they will stick you into a theoretically they will put you in a match in uh, if i'm in north carolina they'll put me in a match against someone in 
these, I don't know, Texas, further out even, you know, Nevada. Um, they'll put me in a, in a match with them if the skill ratings line up. Like, that's more preferred over putting me in the server in Georgia, for example. And I don't think that's right. I don't, I don't think that's right no matter how you slice it. I don't care how much money there's, there is involved. It's, that isn't good. And the fact that if you do improve, your connections will factually get worse, proven by Drifter, Exclusive Ace, all the other data guys. Right. That's so, not so good. You think, you think a company like Activision should change their matchmaking parameters knowing full well that, that it's going to hurt their, their player retention to make people that live in more remote areas like a little bit happier. Like I'm not, I don't mean to sound like a dick because like I sympathize with that. I live in Los Angeles. My ping is like never below 30 or 40, like ever. Yeah. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Just ever. And it, it never puts, it never puts me in like East coast lobbies. But if I lived in like a more remote region of the country, of course that would be frustrating. But why would the expectation be that like I'm not Activision? I, I'm yeah. not. Ne I'm not necessarily referencing the location because it is frustrating for people in Australia. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a whole another that's that's a whole other beast. Oh, I'm yeah. saying that it's no matter where you're. Okay, you said you've never had a ping above thirty. So let's say suddenly you get like just a monster. Just a monster playing on your account. I, I don't know who to reference here. Uh, we'll just say Scump because he's the go-to. And he's overrated. Okay, well in that case, uh, I don't know. That's true. Um, you know anybody? No, okay, yeah, yeah, anybody yeah. really good. And then you start playing the next day, and all of a sudden your thirty pings are now seventy pings. Is that fair? I, I just don't think that's fair. I don't think you should ever be punished for getting better at a game, whether that's connections or whatever. And you can't deny, you cannot deny that even in Warzone, I think they have this problem with the skill-based matchmaking in there, but uh, the higher, I guess, the higher skill bracket you are in, there are 100% more cheaters. I've had friends as well even get shadow banned and they're not cheating. Like uh, gaming yeah, definition, that, he's I mean, really good. I mean, he gets shadow banned. The whole system, I there needs to be a a transparency, but also like b uh, just a, a new approach. Sometimes try new things. They they're so big that I mean, you saw Vanguard. It sold pretty badly compared to other Call of Duty titles. Still number one. I don't think. I mean, they they've. They've been selling Call of Duty and keeping players engaged way before there was ever a skill-based matchmaking system like this. And did you see the, like, for example, did you see the Black Ops 2 uh, um, player count that Drifter um, posted? I think it was two years exactly after the game had come out and there were two other Call of Duties, you know, that just released. Uh, it was Ghost and then whatever came after that. Advanced yeah, it had Warfare. like 250,000 players on it was on nearly 360 or whatever. It was nearly 300,000 players. That game did not have strict skill-based matchmaking. It was the, the light, you know, classic Call of Duty skill-based matchmaking. The game was great. I don't think anyone I can argue. I felt like that game had like, I felt, because I'm normally pretty good at Treyarch games. Like Treyarch mm -hmm. games are the ones where my KD is like 2.2 .2 or 2.3 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in that game, I struggled. So like, I felt like, there was like it got stricter with that game. I feel like it got really strict with the advanced warfare. I that's think that's when it really tightened up. I think, then, uh, yeah, yeah. I think Black Ops Two was just uh, not to fanboy it too much. I think it was just a harder game. I, I think it was one of the higher skill gap Call of Duties. I really do, and I'm not just yeah, saying I was, that because, yeah, I was um, fucking trash. At that. <laughs> I I I loved it, man. I I can't tell you and all my friends loved it you know that was a game that whether you were casual advanced and that's another thing too is like um i played cold war with um just as an example on the on the topic skill based magic matchmaking before i forget but um i played cold war with uh my friends my best friend's dad and uh one of my good friends as well who aren't just they just aren't the best you know they're like uh, one KD, you know, on the old Call of Duties before the strict skill based matchmaking, they're not that great. They're, you can't solve so, for this problem. There's no perfect solution to the problem of like a better player playing with worse players, and mm. then they get matched up with like people in the middle well, no, which no. are going to be better than them. It's 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 one of those things where okay, we we started playing together. I'm playing Cold War with them. I start dropping harps, you know, and they're like, "Oh, this is great, dude! Like, we gotta invite you here more." And then by game five, they are miserable. And right. they don't want to play anymore. But there's no perfect solution to this problem. <laughs> there is. That doesn't, that, there no, there no, no. is. It's just don't I, fucking I'll bet it. you five bucks that whatever solution you propose is going to hurt player retention. If you <laughs> listen to the skill-based matchmaking parameters, you're going to have people whose sessions are shorter and shorter on average. 
Okay. They optimize this shit all the time. They do A-B tests when we don't even know about it. Like I've had multiple devs from multiple AAA studios reach out to me in the DMs and be like, thank you, brother, for fighting the good fight. And then they tell me like how they tune things on the back end. They can't tell me too much because it's like protected information, yeah. which is the other point I wanted to make. They can't like tell you <sighs> how they do their skill-based matchmaking because they're not going to... This is legally protected information. If they give that information to the competitors, that would be silly. So there's like a, a really obvious reason why they're not going to be completely transparent about how they do but their matchmaking. But they're not even... They're not even remote. Like, they, they haven't even... You can't even say it as a COD dev. I wouldn't be surprised if their contracts say there's... If you ever mention, you know, skill-based matchmaking or anything that rhymes with it, you're fired. I've never heard... I, I could be wrong. I've never seen or heard anything about it. If it wasn't for, like, Drifter, Exclusive Ace, people that notice this stuff and, Why you know, do, do they the have tests. To, though? Why? Because like, every... I, I, because if it's... It's like, okay, um, if I come over to your house... If you invite me over to your house for dinner and I have a gun in my po a coat pocket and I just don't tell you, you know what I mean? It just as an example... That's kind of rude, isn't it? Like, wouldn't you say? That's not, not to mention dangerous. But, I'm struggling uh, with the metaphor, but sure. uh, it, it's okay. okay. You're selling us a product. There's this system that you base your entire product around, and you're not even mentioning it. It's there. We all know it's there. Just I think literally people, say, like, hey, it's here. I think here. most people yeah. in the world, I think most people in the world just sort of expect fair, fair competition, like the, the principle of fair competition. 95% of the world. If you walk down the street and just ask random people, you know, should video games match you up with people against your own skill level or they should they match you up against people that are way worse or way better than you? I bet you 99% of the people walking down the street would be mm. like, uh, you're asking the competition. You're asking the question wrong. You should say, should you get matched based on your skill level to face people in your skill bracket or have it randomized and have ping be the deciding factor. Maybe a lot of them won't know what ping is even, you know, like maybe I'm wow. overestimating the intelligence of the average. I feel like internet speeds have gotten so much better in yeah. 2023. And, and there are so many people playing that you can do both at the same time. You can have skill based. Like how, <sighs> like how long does it take you to match make when I play Warzone? It's like instant. I'm not playing. We, we so, queue up and it's like we're in a lobby like 15 seconds later. And, and oh, that's Warzone though. That's Warzone. What you though. have to say about my skill level, sir? <laughs> we get we are put in a high bracket. Like we got matched. <laughs> we got matched up against fucking Swag and Tim the Tap Man like yeah, three yeah. times a couple weeks ago. So like we don't suck as a team. I so I like, watched you. Sorry, I watched you watching my video on uh, your stream. The second video It was very entertaining. Yeah. By the way, that was a really good. Uh, roast. I enjoyed that, but As I did. A... You're, you're, you just keep making these bangers, <laughs> great videos. I'm, I hope to see a threequel when the next. Con well, this comes is out this is some spicy take. This is uh, the, the threequel kind of right here. So we'll have to just start a new kind of trilogy. I'll, I'll give somebody else the rights to it. But um. Okay. All but right. uh, no, well. like like um, God, I'm getting sidetracked here. But because uh, now I'm thinking of. The new no, Halloween but like, but yeah. I, I, I think my point is valid. I think most people prefer fair competition. It's just implied. Okay, like Most but, people don't want to go up again. You should not be in a lobby against a 1.0 player. Just feasting on them, demoralizing them. You okay, just shouldn't. But you Hutch, should what if I'm playing, playing, what if I'm playing with 1.0 KD players? And do you think that's an isolated incident? Do you think that that is an isolated incident? The, no, the I better think the player. Is, I think the game is obviously going to take your MMR and your person's MMR, and it's going to put it together and divide it by two, and then find you a lobby of people that fall within a certain range. You know what else That's would do just that? Just not having it. it. Just not having it, and, and going no. king is king. They, <laughs> I mean, okay, um, well, what, about, what about the Fall Guys devs, and what about the Destiny devs, like talking openly about this stuff? And I, they're, Apex, they're they're like, talking openly about it, and I appreciate that. That's that's really all I want. I want but open not, discourse. But they're not going into detail about like this is how we determine. You know, these are that's the, fine. These are the factors that we use. That is fine. There's all there's got there's going to be dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of variables that call of a game like call a multi billion dollar franchise like Call of Duty with with development budgets that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars, they're going to be measuring so many different variables to determine. It's not just going to be that MMR rating. Like there's right. all, there's all kinds of things that they measure and yeah. they're not going to give you that information. Like, I mean, like sure they could come out and say, yes, skill-based matchmaking is in the game, but everybody already knows it's in the game at this point. And, it, and at that point, it's just going to fucking piss off the same anti-skill-based matchmaking people. There's no upside to them just 
coming out and saying yes it's in the game like, i just don't i don't, I, there, I don't the think there's an upside there? well, what's the strategy for hiding it and, and not just hiding it but never addressing like you know good players getting worse pings that is a factual thing that happens and i disagree with that you shouldn't have a worse experience if you're better at a video game you just should never have that you know it, it shouldn't be a thing i uh, think their thought process was probably like they did they didn't even think that they needed to like add that disclaimer i think they just assume that most players prefer fairer competition and they are correct in that and but, then every once in a while they have to deal with like you know every you know, every month or every other month skill-based matchmaking trends on twitter and they get like some <laughs> some bad press from fucking like tim the Tatman or whatever but who gives a fuck here's the here's <laughs> the issue Here, Q, when you look at their q4 <laughs> profits do you think they're like well you know we made fucking two billion dollars last december but tim the Tatman's pretty upset about skill-based matchmaking so maybe we should tune it down i don't like, think no, obviously I, not i don't think i don't think the skill-based matchmaking system equates to much if any different okay here's what i think i i truly don't think it would matter if they had it or not in regards to profits i think call of duty is going to make money hand over fist regardless i think call of duty would keep players on the game more so than they're doing now just by making a good game You're first and foremost in you are in denial about the positive impact that skill-based matchmaking has on can you retention. explain can you explain then why the only metric we have to track i would love to have the other metrics we do not and i'm sure it is better on console i'm sure it's lost less players on console because it seems the pc version of uh call of duty every single year is riddled with problems and cheaters no matter what so <laughs> It's gotten better. Like Ricochet doesn't get everyone, but it's gotten way I don't know. Better. I don't know, man. Engine owning just came out with a new. I, I don't want to promote that, but they, they just came out with a, some new stuff, and it's. I, I hear it's worse than ever, actually, as of like a few weeks ago. But well, uh, maybe I haven't been on Warzone in like a week or two, so maybe. Yeah, but yeah, uh, there was a point. There was a point in Warzone one before Ricochet where the cheating. It was like one every four games. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, it has not been like that anymore i don't know i don't know if i've ever knowingly run into a single cheater in warzone 2 i ran into it's one probably uh, happen i ran into one actually an mw2 um aimbot uh yeah aimbot guy with uh the one shot kill headshot br i think it's the g3 but not it's not the g3 because of legal issues um, uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. uh okay. ran into one of those guys and it wasn't fun and that's another thing too like if we're talking about you want to be matched up, you know, people should be matched up against players of players their skill level. Yeah, okay. Yes. Fair enough. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yes. There's there's different metas. There's different metas between the top players and the lower skilled players. The the game plays completely differently. Of course. Okay, of so course. why is there not a lobby versus like a lobby yeah. of like actually talented players? Of course yeah. it's gonna play different. Yeah, and then every single flaw, the better you get, every single flaw with the game is magnified. If there's one gun that's just head and shoulders above the rest, if you are in a lobby where you have 70 ping and your clone has 35 ping and you keep running into them, you know, who's gonna come out on top on average? Like he is. That's not well. that's not skill based that's not skill based matchmaking. That's that's literally <laughs> like but again, there's no there's no perfect solution to your problem that wouldn't there's no solution that would that would not hurt their bottom line. You say just make it random, just have it be based on ping. Yes. I'm telling you. I'm Maybe telling light you light skill based matchmaking. Light for the really really bad players, like how it was in you know like Black Ops two three. Uh, Why Power would they do that if they can if they can optimize player retention even more? Like, but you, uh, here's what they do. Mm. Here, let me. I was gonna tell you this is something that they do. Okay. I've had people again. This is I've had like multiple devs reach out to me on the back end okay. uh, and, and tell me they do a B test all the time without even telling us. Right. So they do change their skill based matchmaking parameters. They loosen them up, they tighten them up, and mm. then they look at the numbers. They look at the data and they say the average play time went from this to this to this. So let's say, you know, we tighten it this much, player retention goes up 10%, and you know, revenue goes up like 7% commensurately. They they are they have like rooms filled with analysts and all they do is they just look at these numbers and their only job is to just and it's an and it's an ongoing like never ending job of like constantly tuning these things in order to optimize it and money ball the shit out of it mm -hmm. that's I, their I, whole thing I, so I like understand. why would they why would they make a decision that is going to harm them 
financially? Why would they? And and like more to your point, why would they? Why would they make a decision that's going to make more players unhappy? But it okay, would make okay. you happy. Okay, I I get all that, and that all makes sense. But can you? The metric we do have is Steam. I would love to have more, but we don't. Can you explain to me then why, in the course of three months, three months, the player base has dropped by? Now it's not it's four flat. months. It's four months after launch. October twenty eighth. On a, on a, November twenty eighth. Plat- or yeah, three and a half. Whatever. December twenty eighth. On a on a on a platform <laughs> that. Yeah, October, wait, wait, to, wait, wait. October to November to December to January to February. But but that's not including. Okay, but that's not just multiplayer. So my main argument is multiplayer. That we're talking Warzone, DMZ, single player. You know, the whole shebang is is in one metric. That's not uh-huh. that great, Hutch. I mean, no matter how you slice it, I don't know. It makes losing... sense to me. Warzone, Warzone Two is like a, is basically like a game mode for Modern Warfare Two. I don't know why this is like you think it's like cheat, cheating for them to do that, but I, no, 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 I don't, no, think, no. It's I don't think it's cheating. Like I think Black, it's just Blackout was a Blackout was a game mode in Black Ops Four. We didn't like right. want them to separate those player numbers there. I, I, I no, I get that, but I'm just saying that it's way worse than you think on the multiplayer end. Then, like, I'm sure Warzone Two is is fine, you know, but. That 80% drop with all three big game modes, like it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you're, you're treating Steam like it's just a, a footnote. I mean, this game had a nearly 500 concurrent players on Steam at one, like during the launch of uh, Warzone 2. This game yeah. is pretty consistently, or was consistently in the top 10. This game uh, had a record as like one of the top 10 most played concurrent of all time until recently. I think Goose Goose Duck knocked it out, actually. But uh, which I haven't even heard of that game, so I'm not sure where that came from. Probably some streamers not playing familiar. it. Yeah. Um, but like, it's it's. I, I'm sure. Like, I really am not trying to be a, a naysay, like a negative Nancy here, as far as the player count goes on console. I'm sure it's not as bad as a 70 to over 80 percent drop in players. You know, as it is on Steam or whatever. I'm sure it's not. What do as you think bad. would be like? What do you think would be like an acceptable player retention? An acceptable player retention, uh, probably if the game was really, really good. I mean, four I s- months after launch, right before the first like new season. Uh, I would say an acceptable one on on Steam, for example, would be like maybe uh, down forty percent, and then each season. No. Yeah, you're, no, you're, man, you your uh, your expectations for player retention are way too high. Hutch CS:GO CS:GO just broke a record on Steam. It just I'm not making it's this up. C- that's CS:GO. That's of CS course. exactly. It's a good game. That's the point. You, you're gonna have games like you're gonna have games like Elden Ring and Red Dead and GTA and CS:GO that are just like permanent fixtures on the top ten uh, Steam list. But when you have when you have IPs like Call of Duty or fucking Halo or whatever that come out y- yearly or, or 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 more often than CS:GO came out fucking over ten years ago. Like That's the point. That's the point I'm trying to make. Came out. It eleven years ago. No new content. No new content. No new content for the past two years. I think I read. Uh, broke its record. Broke its all time current concurrent player record. Like, Steam is its home. That's like one of the. the that's fine. CS:GO on Steam is like Mario on Nintendo. Do you really Call think of, there Call is of, Call of Duty on Steam? Call of Duty hasn't even been on Steam since when? Since. But that's Black the Ops three. I think was the last one. They that's just, the like, only metric on. we can track. Yeah. So I I don't think it's I don't I really don't think it's any different between Steam and Battle.net. Truthfully, I I don't. I think the no, definitely. De- I I, how, I mean, listen, how? we can't know because yeah. there's because because there's like thousands of titles that come out on Steam every year. There's like five that come out on Battle.net every year. But it's so on like, the PC, Hutch. It's the same platform. It's not like I can't download no, Battle.net and Steam in no, like Battle.net five minutes. Is not the same. Battle.net is not the same platform as Steam. It's a totally different group of gamers. I listen. We can't know. <laughs> so it's like hard to like. It, it, I'm 100 percent 100 percent accurate on this one. <laughs> Steam is Steam is gonna like Steam player behavior uh, is not gonna be representative of what you find on Battle.net. It's not gonna be representative of what you find on PlayStation. I'm sure those numbers are trending down. I'd be really surprised if the numbers are trending as far down as Steam. But I look at this completely different. To be honest with you, I, I look think... at it like 
Mm. Holy fuck. A Call of Duty on Steam was still top 10 four months later. That has like literally never happened. When it used to come out on Steam before, the game would like fall off a cliff after like two weeks. Well, that's because no crossplay. Literally, like it's literally no crossplay. That's the main reason. And but... there was way less PC support. But I'm just saying. Yeah. But yeah. that's the point. Like, oh, there's still to, no PC to... support. But <laughs> keep going. You <laughs> keep going. You're... I don't know, man. Like they have shaky launches. There's some crashes, and then after like a week two or week, you know, week one or week two patch, <laughs> like I haven't had like that many crashes. That. But that that's you. Have... That's you. That's see. That, that's the thing. It's like. Um, you, you want to go back to like, ah, you, you know, this person thinks their opinion's the end-all be-all. That's you. you. You have great pings. You're in California. You're in, I'm assuming, L.A. or near L.A. You have great pings. Yeah. You are not experiencing crashing. What about the people that get shadow banned in the lobbies where they have 150 ping and are crashing constantly and it's not their setup? You know what I mean? It, that's. I just think that, that I don't think a lot of people are getting shadow banned wrongly. I'm sure it happens. It's not. A Hutch, there was a, there was a glitch where you would get 10 kills in Warzone and then get shadow get shadow banned. You would, the lobby would kick you out. And it's back. It just came back. That was a glitch a couple As months ago. regularly gets 20 to 30 kills in the games that I play, it never happened to me. Yeah, but, okay, you're not hungry, I but it, I'm sure there's world hunger, right? No, I know. I, yeah. I'm not making the point that these things never happen. I'm just saying I yeah. don't think that they're as big of a problem as you think they are. I think that that glitch is a huge problem for a company that makes a million, no, more than a million dollars a day. Now, okay. I'm totally unfamiliar with this glitch that you're talking about. I, Are you I've serious? I've never run into this glitch. Are you yeah, serious? I've never, I've never run into this glitch. Modern, but again, uh, I, I have uh, not played, I have not played Warzone in like a couple of weeks. Uh, if, it's, if it's a new glitch, whatever. But like, no, it's I not. It's get... been there since I think Warzone One. I want to say I don't. I don't play Warzone. Someone correct me. But it's I know it was there. To me. I've gotten ten plus kills plenty of times. It's Rack never, split it's literally... a... That's fine, but it, it. That's the thing. You have to acknowledge that it is happening. Like it may not affect you. You might be having a great time, but I never said it didn't affect me. I'm saying you're trying to make the point that it's this like widespread problem that's impacting it, like. Uh millions of players i've just i've i've not seen that happen that's fine but i'm telling you i've seen like me trying to play with lower skilled people they don't want to play with me or they just get off you know and that doesn't help player retention so which is it like is it a personal experience thing is it an actual metric thing what are we going like what are we doing here you can't just switch I back mean, and I forth still, I, I, st I still think you're in denial that <laughs> skill-based matchmaking unequivocally helps player retention I am a, it, it from the numbers firm, I have seen from the yes. numbers I have seen on Steam, which is the only numbers we have. I would love to see the actual numbers. Uh, yes, I think it hurts more than it helps as far as and it, okay. Uh, here's another thing: Modern War Zone, Modern War Zone, and Charlie Intel both have insider information. Uh, they both have said that the numbers for War Zone, Modern Warfare Two, etc are well below expectations. I have that tweet screenshotted. I can pull it up. On I've my seen PC. the same tweet. Right. I've seen the same tweet. Well yeah. below. Not just like below, but Modern Warzone confirmed. Like it's 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 below. It's well below where they but want this kinda, it. This kind of goes back to the to the to the to the Vanguard point, which was like you said that Vanguard was a failure, but but what what could be disappointing for, for a game like Modern Warfare 2 that has persistent relevance in the gaming space and, and, and are hugely successful every year, that could be the difference between like 1.8 jibillion dollars and 1.4 jibillion it's like oh no we you know we were like our game was like a little under the sales expectations that we wanted but we were still not the number one selling game for that year it's still vanguard however much you disliked it and however much it maybe fell below their internal expectations was still a massively successful game they called it a failure they they literally went on record they called it disappointing i don't know if they said failure yeah i might be I paraphrasing there but uh well you know what it is a failure i think everyone would agree with that as far as if you've played it it's a failure of a game uh, it needs to be buried in the desert with et on atari um but uh no it, it was it, that that was a game where like it was very clear that whoever was developing it you you, you quit after two weeks Trust me when I say, and anyone in your in your chat right now um, can verify this. It just continued to get worse and worse. There was a there I was. I think an, you are way too hard on developers. Uh, I think touch, you're way too hard on them. Touch they I they really do. Okay, I think no, most, no, developer, a, most developers are like <laughs> most developers are like 
fucking Sam from Wisconsin who got a fucking graphics design degree in in Denver <laughs> and then moved out to LA and is making like sixty thousand dollars a year in one of the fucking most expensive cities in the world to live in. I'm sorry. I think, but I, think like... I think these developers, I think most of these developers absolutely take pride in what they do. <laughs> and even if it doesn't make the hardcore players happy. They're not just like phoning it in. They okay. really do like make an effort. Can you explain to me then why uh, these games recently, the Call of Duty games released with all these problems, they touted 3,000 devs. They had three uninterrupted years. Elden Ring, and it, it's a different game, of course. It's on the FPS. Elden Ring comes out, I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, they had around 500 devs. Um, worked on it about two and a half years, you know, through the pandemic and all that. Comes out, you know, critical acclaim, game of the year. Straight up, very little to, to no glitches and bugs. In my playthrough, I experienced zero, and I played through the game three or four times, I believe. Yeah, the game's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, no, wait, well, there are definitely bugs in that game. A there's, big yeah, there is. A game like Elden Ring? Oh, there is. No, I'm saying that bugs are expected, but there's things where it's like basic stuff not working. Like, we should have a combat record on launch. Why, you know what I mean? There should be, in Vanguard, a, a joke I had was like, they had these playlists, they would put these playlists out, and there would be no playlist description. It would just be the playlist name. They had Killbox, sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, "What the hell is Killbox?" Sometimes what? Sometimes they sometimes they have they make some questionable decisions. But but I'm uh, saying by and large, the massive group of developers that work on these games are like really trying to make a good game. And Sledgehammer, I think, prob don't they don't have the best track record when it comes to like the COD community, especially like <laughs> the online community. Yeah. But they do actually make attempts to innovate, actually, and I think you have to give them credit for that. Advanced Warfare. Oh, yeah. I no. thought their jetpack stuff was not great compared to like Black Ops Three, but at least they were trying to innovate. And 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 even with Vanguard, I really like what they did with the combat pacing. So you could pick like six v six or eight v eight or twelve v twelve. I thought that was excuse me really clever as well mm -hmm. no i so it's not like, i will give credit it's not like where they're not due. trying no, no, no. i just i think i think anthony i think you're a little hard on them i think you're I, a little hard on them and i think you get your audience to be a little hard on them uh, and then you get these fucking weirdo <laughs> intel types that are like <laughs> sending death threats at fucking joe secott i think it just goes way too far sometimes yes no i opinion. i don't i don't condone that at all no uh i don't condone them doing that at all no i, I don't at the developers on Twitter directly. Uh, I do, I've been adding the official COD account and just posting Sleeping Shack or, uh, you know, a funny GIF every now and then, but I'm not doing anything I shouldn't supposed to, I'm you not supposed to be doing. You have professional Joe Secott suplexer in your, in your Twitter yes. bio, do you? Yes, and I've, I've gone on record and, and I've gone on record to say this, it's it's for flair for the videos. I don't hate Joe Secca. I would have a beer. Joe I would buy Seca, him a beer. If you met, if you met him in real life, he's like one of the most mild mannered, like oh, really I'm... nice guys. Like he is not an aggro guy. He's a super nice guy. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. But you understand, I'm just, you know, shooting the shit. I'm playing a, a character on YouTube. I don't actually want to okay. suplex him. It's a catchphrase. It's like saying, okay. uh, it's like you saying, I want to elbow drop. I want to Macho Man Randy Savage elbow drop Donald Trump. You know, it's the same thing. Do you actually want to do that? Yeah, exactly. Never, but it's never. funny. It's fun to say. Um, well, as much as I want to have, I would love to actually keep continuing this conversation, but mm -hmm. I told my friends I was going to play video games with them. So no, that's going. totally fine. That's totally fine. Uh, this right. was this was relatively civil. Thank you for having me on. Um, and yeah, this was, this was a good discussion. Uh, I do see your point with all this, by the way. I just think that with the hard numbers we do have, it's showing a clear decline. And I don't think whatever they're doing, whether that's school-based matchmaking or whether that's just releasing really buggy, broken, unfinished games, lacking features that we got 10 years ago, you know, on launch, uh, like whatever the case may be, um, I, I don't think whatever they're doing is working. That's my I final think point. I think Modern Warfare is a fucking dope game. I had a ton of fun with it. I'm still having fun with it. But yeah, anyways, anyways, uh, I quit playing. For coming on. I, yeah, I quit playing in December at the start of December. But hey, thank you. I will talk to you later. Peace. All right, take it easy, brother. Do some parting advice. Ah!